<laughs> Can you believe that this has been sitting there for three years and we finally get to enjoy it? No, it's crazy. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm so excited. He let the scent drift downstream like the wind carries away his hair. See, he's starting to act on habit. So Mowgli was really settling into his new forest home and getting more and more comfortable. And the cottonwoods were still blowing in some spots. And Allie and I continued moving things from the old apartment and storage units into the new house, trying to get our lives organized and get everything squared away before July. while also trying to keep momentum strong at the cabin and continue making progress there. We had a lot of plates spinning at once and needed all the time, energy, and focus we could garner to make it all happen. And as difficult as it was on its own, a curveball would soon be thrown into the mix. <laughs> so I've had a little bit of a head cold for the past couple of days and feeling really exhausted tonight. But I think it'd be a good time to do some of the little projects around like uh, some of the outlet covers and I got to wire up some outlets on the porch maybe put the screen door on. Right now, Allie's staining cedar shakes. Weather depending, finish the wall, the big wall on the other side of the cabin. Also, I mean, we're gonna finish the whole cabin. Another goal, and I don't know how far we'll get because we gotta balance office days with being here and working, but I wanna set up the wood-fired hot tub. I bought that thing about three years ago, and it's just been sitting at my parents' house <laughs> and haven't had a chance to put it together, so that will be life-changing. <laughs> it's hard to tell just how big this is. It's got to be. Why don't you go there and put your hand next to it? It's got to be three inches across. I could smell the food from when I started coming down the stairs. No way. I'm so excited. I'm so hungry. Um, so I was thinking. <sighs> well, I'm still feeling a little under the weather. I'm gonna make some tea. Allie's doing some stuff in town today. I also have to run to town. And I want to finish building the platform for the hot tub. See what I get done today, but there's a long list of things that can be chipped away at, so just keep chipping. And so I worked on some writing at the cabin and then hightailed it to the storage units to continue clearing those out and bring their contents to the house. And I made the boring phone calls to the utility companies for the new house and set up appointments and pushed through the sickness to keep the ball rolling. Unfortunately, I haven't baked for months. It's been a good long while. Because of that, my sourdough starter has just sat in the fridge. I'm pretty sure it can live almost indefinitely in the fridge. I'm gonna wake it back up. It's pizza season. It's time to start having pizza dough ready at all times. And also, just to have, I, want, I can't wait to cook my first loaf of fresh bread here in the oven. 
have the whole little cabin smelling like bread. But uh, I just woke this up. Curious to see how long it takes to come back to life. Did a lot of running around today called uh, the homeowner's insurance company. Apparently our homeowner's insurance inspected the house, said that the roof was in too bad a shape and that the balcony out back was rotting and they're discontinuing our policy is just <laughs> one thing after another. And it just makes such a difference being sick. I have no energy. It feels like it's getting worse. My throat is just, and I know it's okay to rest, but I've got certain sponsors and projects that I've got to get done on deadlines. And the deadlines don't change when you're sick. I'm gonna do something easy tonight, something I've been meaning to do for <laughs> two years. I'm gonna finish building that platform out back where ultimately the hot tub's gonna go, but tonight I think we're gonna set up a little projector and watch a movie on it. Both of Ali's sisters are here. It's nice to have the family here and it'll be good to get this platform done. So that brings us to this video sponsor, which is Nebula and their new Mars 3 projector. This thing is built for exploration. While it's projector first, it is so much more than that. So it's completely portable. It has a built-in battery that lasts up to five hours. To turn it on and off, all you have to do is open this little flap and it turns on automatically. You can also check the battery without even turning it on. You just hit the mode button on the back and it will tell you how much battery you have left. There's a light on the back with three different brightness settings. The stand on the bottom, the built-in stand, super useful. The second you pick it up, you can tell it's well built. It can withstand drops up to half a meter. It can withstand dirt. It has an IPX3 waterproof rating and it delivers a 40 watt speaker experience. You can turn it into Bluetooth speaker mode and the speaker is really loud and it's got bass too, which works great when you're watching movies. It's got USB-A and C charging ports so you can charge devices off of it. It's a top-of-the-line projector but it's also a portable power unit. It can project up to four meters. It has an ultra-large screen that can go up to 150 inches. It's got 1080p with 800 ANSI lumens and it has AI image adjust technology which means it will adjust the display to the perfect brightness level depending on your surroundings. It also automatically focuses itself. It takes very little effort. You can see set it up in about three seconds. You can use Google Voice, Chromecast, all of that is directly integrated. No matter where you go to explore, you can bring the modern world with you. So if you purchase a $1 coupon, you can get $200 off the Mars 3 until July 9th. This is their biggest deal of 2023. So thank you to Nebula for sponsoring this video and for supporting this channel. And now back to the story. <coughs> We're at the apartment today. I had to bring the trooper in for a alignment. Still feeling the sickness today. It's hitting extra hard. I just want to go to bed. So I'm going to do that, but we don't have a bed in here, so I have to sleep on some old sheets. It's too many obligations right now. It's a crazy time period. Hopefully gonna do a half day in the office and then get back to the cabin. But first, 
sleep. And while I slept, I dreamed of the past few weeks of late May and early June in the hills, like the first day we got our fridge working at the cabin. Everything should be hooked up. Fire up the fridge, see if she turns on. And now there's a mouse sleeping in the field. Where? <laughs> no. She just, <laughs> she just loves being outside. Woo! <laughs> So then I let go. Wait, when the needle gets to green. And then it said, how long I hold this for another 10, 15 seconds. Blah, blah, blah. So, that's it. <laughs> we now gotta we got to stock the fridge. <laughs> and all the trash runs we did between the cabin and the new house with the smell of fresh cut hay. And I dreamed of the day the cottonwoods blew and how they coated the cabin garden for days after. And of the picnics at Allie's grandparents, where we walked the same stream in the backyard for the third year in a row. day my friend John helped me get Old Blue running after she died and then towed her to his shop so we could look her over more. The day Mason came home from the islands and I saw him for the first time in months, all tanned and shaggy. <laughs> and I brought him to see the new house and he gave me a life-changing proposition for later in the summer. Oh my God, there he is. And the day Blonde John called me and said he found a big brown under an overhanging tree. Look how he looks for the wily trout. Watch how he hops to the grass. He doesn't want to alert it. He lets his scent drift downstream like the wind carries away his hair. He drops in low. He figures it's not low enough and he climbs upstream. Does this have audio? Yes. Thank God. Now <laughs> you hear that? Trout doesn't hear it though. This brings him back to about nine or 12 years old. See, he's starting to act on habit. Folks, this is round two. He's still fishing. I don't think he's gonna catch it. This is a real wily trout here. Yeah, heard all the excuses over here. <laughs> And I relished in that dream a little longer than usual, because on the river with best friends is my favorite place to be. And when I awoke in the apartment about five hours later, I felt a bit better. And so we headed back to the hills to tackle the next step in our cabin dream. Hi, Oida. These are crickets. Oh, well, yeah. This is bonk. They're completely so
And so we brought the hot tub to the cabin, grabbed some good stuff for dinner from the local co-op, and got some more work done after dark. I'll tell you what, I feel worlds better. I don't know how it happened. We were up late. We worked so much. I did a lot of fasting and a lot of fluids. I mean, I still have a little scratchiness in my throat, but I'm pretty much better. And we just went and got some groceries this morning from the local farm stand. And uh, we're going to set up the hot tub today. Oh, it feels so good to feel better. You take for granted when you feels feel... Good to feel good, man. <laughs> it does. <laughs> And on the door that morning was our first Luna Moth visitor at the cabin. Apparently you're supposed to set these hot tubs up within seven days of, uh, of delivery. And it's been three years. and I had a glorious day together under the hemlocks, setting up the tub at a slow and steady pace, watching Mowgli climb trees and go near the water for the first time, and saying out loud how these were the kind of days we dreamed about for so long on late office nights while we worked away. Ever since I bought the place five years ago, I always pictured having a tub here. A perfect place to soak after a long day of hard work. No chemicals, no additives, just fresh water heated by wood. A completely natural and zen experience. And just as we finished putting the tightening bands on, the rain started to fall. Remember when I had it trapped in the shake bin? Can 
And so we made some hot tea and enjoyed our first summer thunderstorm from the cabin porch. While we waited out the rain and uh, it's on to the final stages, I just tightened all the straps. There's no directions for this, it didn't come with any. Um, there's some parts that I don't really recognize, but I think all that's really left is putting the seats in and then the rest of the stuff are just like, there's a barrier, You've gotta put the seats in the stove in. But the only halfway complicated looking thing is the seats. There's a ton of screws that came with it. And I thought there was no screws involved in the whole process, so. When I went to put the stove pipes together, they didn't quite fit. And Allie called me in for supper, so I figured I'd save it till the next day and get some good sleep and further snuff this cold out. This looks so good. And the bok choy. Mm -hmm. I gave you extra bok choy because I know you like it so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm curious to see if the old Red Bull will fire. I haven't started it since, I don't know, late winter? So I got a crimping tool and got the chimney together, filled the tub and got the fire going. And while the longtime dream felt like it was alive, nothing ever goes quite as planned. Can't believe it's finally here. Kyle, there's no water in it. What? Uh